Good morning. Welcome to Truth for Today. This is Dai Qing Yuan, your host and teacher, pastor of Abilene Bible Church. Today we are continuing our study of the armor of God. This is part of the big series, Understanding Spiritual Warfare, and which is part of the bigger series of Understanding the Spiritual World. We have learned about the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the angelic world, the uh, um, demonic world, and spiritual warfare. And now in this part, we have learned diagnose, deliverance, and defense. And finally, we want to put on the armor of God. And uh, that is the way to keep us able to um, serve God and communicate with God and live under the bliss of God. We are created in the household of God as children, but destined to become sons. To become sons, you have to unite with the eternal Son, which is Jesus Christ. By that, you will have a Christian life. And the, the normal Christian life is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But there are abnormal Christian lives because we have um, baggages. You know, when we become Christians, we have um, a we have a um, history. Usually, we have something to uh, to unlearn before you can put on the the right thing. And uh, that's about you know the spiritual warfare. That's what we have to deal with. And it's not a surprise that this happens. And in America. Um, it used to be a quite clean country for, for pretty long, and this, this country is not many idols because it has been cleansing in early times. But now, as the country becomes more and more secularized, and uh, a secular world does not satisfy people's souls, so people become more spiritual but not Christian. So they turn into other religions and idols, and we become more and more spiritually dirty. So when people become Christians now, you, we usually have a background. We have sinned before, usually something, um, if it's about religion, it's about uh, sexual, about drugs, all of the things have a baggage. And we have to unlearn and unpack it before we can be cleansed and, uh, and purified. So it's not a surprise that we need to deal with this. but. It will be foolish if we don't learn how to do it or how to make our defense uh, once cleansed. So once we um, learn that demons only get on Christians either because they have sin sinned before they became Christian or after they become Christian, certain sins, and uh, only going through a certain doorways. Once we diagnose these doorways, then we can know how to deal with them, how to uh, solve the problem. So we have learned these doorways for demons either are from um, ancestral sins and, um, or from uh, a pre-Christian life, like in false, false religion, occultic, occultic, satanic participation, New Age, uh, or sexual sins, or abortion, uh, mind control events, uh, or role-playing uh, games, and there may be idols in our houses. These are the doorways for pre-Christian life. Um, and uh, there, for the Christians, there may be doorways like um, um, some Catholic communion or um, laying on hands by uh, tongue speakers, uh, slaying spirit, uh, seeking power um, by asking the Holy Spirit to fall upon a believer uh, when they already have him inside, or um, follow the sign of wonder, prophecy, or word of knowledge movement that glorify itself, or fascination for UFOs. These are all possible doorways for the Christians here. Once you diagnose those things, then you recognize that those open doors for demons to, in, to enter. So now you're ready to deal with your, your problem. Okay. Um, so today we are mainly talk, um, talking about self-deliverance. As Christians, if you have truly been saved, you have the Holy Spirit who lives in you, you have been cleansed by Jesus Christ, you have the power from God to cleanse yourself. Okay, this is not to glorify yourself, this is glorifying God, 
who saved you and, uh, and, and He lives in you. He makes you the holy temple uh, by having the Holy Spirit indwelling in you and once you are willing, He can fill you and uh, lead you and guide you and, uh, and use you for uh, His kingdom. So He is here. He is powerful and He can cleanse you, but you have to be willing. Okay. If you're not willing, then He will not force you. We have taught uh, again and again. The Holy Spirit is powerful, yet He is very, very gentle. Okay. He's like a, 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 a ideal um, wife and mother in the, in the Bible, uh, like the P31 woman, that He will manage everything determined by the Father and uh, for the glory of the Father and the Son. And He will never um, glorify Himself, He will glorify the Father and the Son. And uh, He will get everything in order if we are willing to let Him do it. If we don't, He will just stay aside and let us have our way, which is not good. So we have to really know the personality of the Holy Spirit. Okay? He has all the power that God has. He can resurrect the dead, he can drive out the demons, but He does things according to the order of the Father and the, and the Son. And um, everything He does is to honor the Father and the Son. If we do things for the honor of Father and Son, the Holy Spirit will be more than happy to uh, enable us and actually do it for us. Okay? But we have to know Him personally. To know the Holy Spirit means you have to know Jesus Christ first. Then you get to know God, the whole Trinity, the Triune God. It's open to you. Okay? So self-deliverance um, is possible, but you have to be willing to admit all the, all the Bible relieved, uh, revealed about ourselves, that we're a sinner, we're saved by the grace of God, we don't deserve anything, but once we are saved, we have a glorious future, but now we are still weaker uh, than the demons, but we are stronger if we count <laughs> the Holy Spirit um, uh, really uh, as, um, um, as part of us. He is in us. We are in Him, actually. Uh, and if we think that way, we are able to do this self-deliverance. First of all, you need to do is to establish that you are a true believer in Jesus Christ, that you accept God's proposal of the new covenant. Okay? God gave, um, God chose two people of God. One is Israel, one is the church. Israel is chosen by bloodline. Okay? You have to be born of either from your mother or father, from a descendant of um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that was um, Israel. In the old time, it was defined by men, and later when Israel became weaker, and they defined by, by the woman. You have to be born from a Jewish woman. But anyway, you have to have a bloodline. Okay? Uh, but not every Israelite defined that way in the fleshly, physical way are true believers. So not true, all Israelites are true Israelites. Not every one of them know God personally. But the new people of God, the church, are defined not by bloodline, but by the Spirit. They have the Holy Spirit, then you have um, this identity as a new people of God. And this new people all personally know God because they know Jesus Christ. And they all are the members of the new covenant, just like the old Israel are members of the old covenant. So the new covenant is um, far superior than the old one. Um, you, uh, your sins are totally forgiven. You are um, um, a personal. Uh, you have personal relationship with God. And uh, every one of you, uh, if you are in this universal church, you know God personally because you recognize Jesus as your Lord and Savior. N then God the Father is your Father, Jesus Christ is your eldest brother and spiritual husband uh, for the church, and which you are a member of. And the Holy Spirit um, is the one who lives in you and He's the one who gives you power leads you, and He's like the mother who will give you the new life, and He is like the one who will guide you and raise you up, and finally to be independent, and to voluntarily follow God without having to be driven. So that 
is that whole picture of a new covenanter. To be to be able to do self-deliverance, you must first establish you are a true believer of Jesus Christ and you understand, you accept the God's proposal in the new covenant. You understand and acknowledge the absolute existence, sovereignty, and goodness of God. God is the absolute being. He just is. He was not created. He creates everything else. There is only one being that's absolute, that's God. And God is not one person, but three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, um, in the beginning, there was nothing but God. But God created everything uh, for the purpose of love, to expand the love within the Trinity to created beings. That's man and the angels. Men are children to become sons, angels are servants. And uh, that is the big picture. You have to believe God is absolute existence. He is sovereign. He determines everything. He chooses the people of God. He is like the potter that um, uh, makes vessels. Some are made for honorable purposes like uh, um, services in the temple. Some are um, for common and um, demean purposes such like um, bedroom vessels. Uh, you know what I mean. Okay, So the, that's his sovereignty. As a, 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 you have no right if you are a created being to um, to question your Creator. Why do you make me that way? He, it's His sovereignty. If you don't believe that God is sovereign, then you don't believe in God. Okay? And, um, and that's it. And so, to recognize God is sovereign, He has all the right to deal with the things he, that He creates, and which means that He owns. Okay? So, we have no right of complaining. He determines this thing, and we have... Uh, um, only the right to accept the grace that He gives us. He creates us, gives us a life, let us live, and uh, He gives us sunshine and rain for good and the evil. That's love for everybody, but He has some special love for the children whom He has destined to be the, the wife of His eternal Son. That's the church. And if you have been one of the member of the church, be grateful. Be thankful that you have been chosen and don't complain that once you are adopted uh, by the richest man in the earth, uh, on the earth, don't ever complain that he doesn't uh, adopt every other boy in the world. It's not your place to do that. And uh, if you have been married, uh, proposed to marriage by the richest man in the earth and don't complain to him that he doesn't marry every woman in the earth. It's not your place to do that. And he probably wouldn't do that if you realize that you're in that position. So, we need to recognize God is God. Okay? He is the absolute being. He's a sovereign ruler and king. And, but He is not arbitrary. He is not um, um, a tyrant. He is good. He, in His nature, He is holy and just and loving. He is just completely good. He will do everything good as much as He can. You know that God has limits to Himself, but not by anything else, only by His own nature. Because of His goodness, because God is love, He cannot force people to love Him. So, He will have to let go of some people, if, uh, and um, that's it. And, and, but He chooses some people to, to uh, he allowed the evil in the world to uh, let people have a contrast between good and evil, and then God will let these elect, will, they will see a difference, and they will come to faith. So that, how does that work out? We don't know. But you recognize this is God at work, and He is by nature good, and He is sovereign. So if you have some th things you don't understand, recognize as a mystery, okay? And, and uh, Re relieve it uh, and um, just address it to God. Say, God, I know you are this and um, you are great and sovereign and good and uh, I can't understand how you saved me, a sinner and stubborn like stone. And uh, in Chinese we say uh, it's, it's a stinky stone uh, as from the toilet. You know? So that's all sinners, uh, regular sinners. We don't even want a holy God, but He saves us because He is good. And he is love, okay. And he doesn't make everybody saved. He just saved certain people. This 
is just grace to us. If you are one of those, be grateful, recognize that, and praise Him. This is the first understanding possibility that you can do self-delivery. Recognize the existence, so absolute existence, sovereignty, and goodness of God. The second one is that you have to understand and acknowledge the ex eternal sonship, the incarnation, the righteousness, the crucifixion and resurrection, and seating, session of Jesus Christ. So, first of all, Jesus Christ is the second person of the triune God. He is one of the persons of the eternal being. There are three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay? This, Jesus Christ existed forever, eternally. Okay? And uh, He is the eternal Son in the relationship within the Trinity. And uh, The Father is always the Father, the Son is always the Son, the Holy Spirit is like the wife and mother. Okay? And uh, the, uh, the relationship was a voluntary ass assumption of roles within the Trinity. It's not an, a, an act of being that the Father give birth to the Son. No, it's a voluntary choice or assumption of roles. And uh, uh, the, the Trinity is always in love, and uh, that's the existence, that's the uh, uh, quintessential, the eternal, um, and uh, um, the ontological love, and everything else is the reflection of this ontological love. Okay? So, God loves the Son, and God will give everything of His creation to the Son to inherit, and to rule, and to manage. And uh, the Son, uh, in order to save uh, the people which God created, to love, that's the, the people of God. The Son of God revealed Himself in the world by incarnation, that means taking up a body. As some, somebody said, I think it's C.S. Lewis, he said, uh, she, um, Israel, no, uh, Shakespeare could write himself into uh, Hamlet okay, if he wishes. Okay. That is what God did. He wrote Himself into human history by sending the Son to incarnate, taking a, a role in human history. And uh, once God became man, uh, incarnation, then God is truly revealed in the world, uh, totally and uh, accurately, truthfully. That's why Jesus called Himself, He is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay. There's no other way to know to, to God, and uh, there's no, no other way to know God but knowing Christ, and uh, there's no other way of having an eternal life except knowing Jesus Christ. So, Jesus, He truthfully revealed God. If you want to know God, you have to know the, uh, Jesus Christ. And on the other hand, if you don't know God, you don't know Jesus Christ. So, <laughs> that's altogether is one deal. And um, Jesus Christ lived a righteous life on earth, totally righteous. He had no sin. He has, can anyone accuse me and convict me of any sin? Nobody can, because he didn't sin. That's why he's the only man who doesn't deserve death, and that's why he, his death is totally unnecessary for him, but it was necessary for us. He did it out of voluntary act of giving. He gave his life as um, the quintessential redeemer. Uh, he was not only the high priest, he's also the sacrifice. He uh, paid for our sins, not for his. Okay? That's the reason of his crucifixion. To die on the cross is, to, is the most humiliating um, death of mankind, and it's very, very painful. However, he did it because he wants to take all the burden of sin of mankind unto himself. And once he did that, all our sins had been paid for. Theoretically, everybody's sins have been paid for. However, the gift was sent out, and in the package, Jesus Christ, grace, of God. But if we don't accept the grace, then this um, signed order of forgiveness um, will not be effective. We will still be under the law, which already convicted us of death, okay? because sin, the wage of sin, is death. So, Jesus Christ, He did this crucifixion in order to pay for our sin. However, the only way for us to be saved is to accept the gift. Without that, there is 
um, know um, uh, forgiveness and eternal life. And um, thank to God that Jesus Christ, he not only died, he also was resurrected from the dead three days later. He uh, waited 40 days to be ascended. He uh, went into heaven and then According to my study, eight days later, uh, he was seated at the right hand of God the Father. And uh, the day after that is 49th day, and that was the day of uh, Pentecost, the weeks. Okay, Weeks means seven times seven. And then the day after that, Pentecost, 50th day. So that's when the Holy Spirit was sent. The first thing when Jesus sat down at the right hand of God the Father to do is to Together, Father and Son sent the Holy Spirit to live in the world, in the body of the believers. And that's what enables us to, to become not only holy, but also to, uh, to cleanse ourselves. Okay? So, the understanding of the theology about God, about Jesus Christ, are necessary for us to be able to do the self-deliverance. And the third step of understanding uh, is to understand acknowledge uh, salvation by faith alone in Christ. We accept Jesus as the personal Savior, means that we are purchased from hell with His own life, and then you therefore belong to Him. Okay? We have been saved by Jesus Christ, and uh, the only uh, way is that his redemption is a purchase. The purchase is he paying a price to something. A lot of people think that we uh, are um, what Jesus Christ paid to Satan somehow uh, to save us. That's not true. Satan never owned us. Okay? Satan was a servant of the household of God who stole the right of uh, Adam, who was made as the king of the world. Okay. Adam ruled over the world before his fall, and the animals heard his voice and they listened to his voice. The skies and the weather uh, were uh, receiving commands from Adam, and he was the king. He ruled over the world. But after his death, because uh, after his, you know, not death, his sin, which caused the death, um, his role was stolen by the one who cheated him. Therefore, today Satan is the king of the world, but he doesn't own us. He wants to, but he doesn't. And uh, what he does is, is that he still wants to play the one-upmanship because Satan fails because of jealousy to God's designation for man as children to become son. And uh, he wants us to pre he wants to prevent us from, to go that far. That's why he wants to keep people from knowing Christ. Okay. And um, for those who have no, known Christ, he will accuse us and then try to bring us down. That's why he's called Satan, the accuser. He's called the devil, the, 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 uh, the enemy. Uh, really, is not, is not only God, but also us. So, Satan doesn't own us. It's God who owns us. But we used to be created to be loved. We belong to the, to the side, the two sides of God, which is love and uh, justice. We used to be side of, on the side of love, and then we have to be put under justice. God still loves the sinner, but it's limited. We have to suffer uh, under His justice. But once we receive Christ, we are transferred again to under love. How, and this transfer, really, is Jesus' purchase. He paid His life to God, okay? really to God's justice. And in that way, He purchased us. We now belong to God, uh, to Christ. He owns us. Okay, we used to be um, slaves of sin. Okay, which indirectly we are slaves of Satan, and he owns us only in that sense that he could control us. We are actually born from him. We are children of Satan in that sense, uh, in the sense that we have a sinful nature which was seeded by Satan into Adam, and then all the descendants of Adam have the sinful nature, and therefore we are sons of Satan. And, but after you believe in Jesus Christ, you have been changed. You have, been, you have a new nature which is born of the Holy Spirit, and that new nature is totally holy. It will not sin, and uh, this one will still remain even when your body goes away, and together the sin nature goes away. Then you will live forever, and God will give us a new body with the resurrection. So, 
Uh, this is how Jesus Christ saved us. Uh, he um, redeemed us by paying a price, the ultimate price, which is his life. And once he gives that, then we have we don't we are purchased by him. We belong to him. So we used to be slave of sin, and now we are slaves of Christ. Okay, the slave in the sense of servants of Christ. He does not rule over us uh, with inhumanity. He rules us with, with holiness and justice and love and mercy. So in that sense, I'd rather be a slave of him rather than a slave of ourselves, because we are not good uh, owners, and certainly Satan and the world are not. So we now belong to Christ, and only if you understand that these truths can you do uh, the self-deliverance. Okay, you understand about God, absolute ruler. You understand about Christ, the selfless redeemer. You understand yourself that you were a sinner destined for hell, and now you have been redeemed, purchased. And uh, you don't belong to yourself, and certainly you don't belong to Satan, you don't belong to the world, you now belong to Christ. He owns you. He actually has every right to do whatever he likes with you, but he loves you. And uh, because of that, he gives us the best thing. He gives the Holy Spirit that gave him the new position, the new life, the resurrected life, the one with uh, uh, new uh, bodies uh, that is free from the uh, space and time. So everything he gets will belong to us if we just accept him as our husband, the, the one who loves us with everything. So he gave us everything and he purchased us and we do belong to him. So why now devote to him? Recognize that we don't, want, don't belong to us. We have no right to our own body. We don't have a right to our soul. He does. So since he does, it's our duty to make him happy, pleased with us. And if we have anything unholy, if we have demonic things in our lives, he would not be ho happy. So how do we live a life? You know, if you're a married person, if you put yourself as a wife under a loving husband, you will make yourself beautiful and holy and clean for your husband's um, pleasure. Okay, you make up, put on makeup to make your husband happy. And I know some older ladies, they put on their makeup, spend an hour, they say, before they see their husband. <laughs> That's just the true love, okay? And uh, we want to cleanse ourselves is that. It's not just get ourselves out of trouble. If you still do that, that's, that's understandable, but that not, should not be the ultimate purpose. The ultimate purpose is to make our spiritual husband who gave his life for us, make him happy with us, pleased with us. So for that pur purpose, that's the good purpose to cleanse us. May God will be done with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.